Hi, I'm Justin Boyd. I put Ming name in the Goblet of Fire. Um, I'm Amber Churchwell. <laughs> <laughs> and we are the watchers in the basement. <laughs> wow, Brittany, what what a way to come back to the pod. Um, <laughs> right. That was awesome. Please do that the whole um, episode. <laughs> no. One, that's a hard accent to even attempt yeah. to it is. fake. <laughs> also, it kind of hurts my mouth, not gonna lie. So yeah, we're 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 moving forward. <laughs> yeah, but we're back. The real golden trio is back. We're back to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome. Justin to gets the Discord. reference. <laughs> yeah, I did get it. I got it. So anyway, let me get the welcome done. Welcome to the Watchers of the Basement. We are here today to discuss Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That's right, the fourth movie in the Wizarding World franchise. And before I get Amber and Brittany's thoughts on the film, I'm gonna hit you with some Goblet of Fire facts. The Goblet of Fire was released on November 18th, 2005, with a box office of 896 million. It was the highest grossing movie of 2005, beating out Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Yuck. <laughs> What a terrible movie. I'm glad Goblet of Fire. Wow. Went out. Yeah, it's bad. All those prequels are horrible, but we're moving on. Um, however, I feel differently, but that's fine. Despite Goblet we of Fire. We might have to cover that later, but whatever. Oh, we could cover it. Trust me. I know all about it. <laughs> um, despite Goblet of Fire being the highest grossing movie of 2005, it's only the second highest grossing or second lowest grossing, however, in the series, just ahead of Prisoner of Azkaban. So, for whatever reason, the third and fourth movies in the series were the lowest grossing. They still made a lot of money. Let's be real. Um, the runtime is two hours and 37 minutes, which is the second longest behind Chamber of Secrets. We have a new director for the third time in four films. Mike Newell directed this film. He is also he also directed Four Weddings and a Funeral and Donnie Brasco. Those are some of his other notable credits. And of course, the cast includes Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grant, Emma Watson, Michael Gambone, Maggie Smith, Robbie Coltrane, Alan Rickman, Tom Felton, David Tennant, Brendan Gleeson, and Ray Fiennes. Amber, let me tell me what are your overall thoughts, or what do you think about when you hear Goblet of Fire? Um, Christmas time because of the Yule Ball. Um, it's my mom's favorite um, Harry Potter movie, and. Uh, I it's because of the Yule Ball being like winter themed and obviously being around Yule time. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to watch the Harry Potter movies around the holidays. That's mm -hmm. typical. That's that's pretty common and pretty typical. But I don't know why. For me, it's just that one is so closely associated with winter. So that's what I think, honestly. But um, I really, really do like Goblet of Fire. Um, I think it's fun seeing them become more teenagers and um the complications of that mm -hmm. um and the tournament is really cool learning about other wizarding schools because that's something that i'm very interested in like in general about the wizarding world is just the wizarding world outside of this school <laughs> uh so i think it's really really cool to learn and see more people and the, uh it also the tonal shift of everything too after the uh i guess the ending climax of this film it's kind of a it definitely takes us from this is a very kid centric story to oh hey this is actually a very serious war going on hmm. yeah very cool Brittany, <laughs> overall thoughts on goblet of fire bad hair like, good God, the the very fact that and, and Dan Radcliffe talked about this in the <laughs> in the reunion uh, that aired on HBO uh, about a year ago about how, you know, these these movies were done pretty much back to back to back, you know, with a very little short amount of break in between. Right. And so he he said how basically they would go on break, you know, they let their hair out and then they come back, get a haircut and they start shooting. Well, they come back or even during, before that, their producers or whomever tells them, yeah, we're, we're not cutting your hair. And, and, and Dan and Rupert are like, no, like, why? Like, why do this test? So yeah, every time I think of Goblet of Fire, I just really think like, you know, bad hair, which is It is awful. really bad. It's really bad. That's like the first thing that comes to mind. However, <laughs> not to repeat everything that Amber just said, um, but, you know, this is really a big transition period, not only just because the kids are becoming 
you know, well into their formidable teenage years mm -hmm. and really starting to kind of develop crushes and feeling that little sting of, you know, love or, you know, like and that jealousy. Kind of, jealousy is a really big <laughs> theme in, in this in this overall movie. However, the fact that they kind of are going to be forced to grow up a little bit more quickly because of this pending second wizarding world with the return of he who must not be named spoilers everyone in case you haven't watched this movie uh there's three others that you need to watch first before you get to this one but yeah anyway that being said there's there's so much that was left out in this in this movie and and that goes for pretty much all the movies i really feel that the first two movies that we got are very very close adaptations to the books Third one, we had a little bit more uh, creative liberties. And then with the fourth one, they had to like remove so much that went on within the Triwizard Tournament itself. Like, I'm still mad about the maze scene. We need that yeah. Sphinx, damn it. <laughs> but that being said. There's a lot of things in the maze that they just completely just did just away like, with. No, we don't need it. And I'm like, no, that's not. Quick shout out to those in the chat. We've got Walking with the Woods, Nick and Claire, all the way from the UK, oi oi. And uh, Maggie, Mama Maggie is here. Hi, Mom. Uh, hi, Mom. Amber, she says, hi, Amber and friends. Yes, Christmas is my favorite holiday. We heard that Goblet of Fire is also your favorite Harry Potter movie. So I'm <laughs> happy that you're joining us today. Please. Because of Christmas. Your thoughts. <laughs> well, that too. But let <laughs> us know your thoughts in the chat. And to those who are also watching who may not have said hi in the chat, thank you so much for being here. Let us know your thoughts. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to all of Amber's wands here on YouTube, <laughs> a study of wand lore in the wizarding world. Yes. And as well as her Instagram account at all of Amber's dot wands. <laughs> She'll talk a little bit more later about wands, the specific wands from some of our Triwizard Tournament champions. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Brittany. So yeah, you mentioned that uh, Amber's mom, her favorite movie is Goblet of Fire. It's now my favorite Harry Potter movie also. And I'll, you know, I'm obviously not as versed in the Harry in the wizarding world as y'all are, but I now I've seen this movie three times. So it's, I've seen it more than all the other movies. And uh, <laughs> this is a good one. And I'm, I'm going to start I'm off. So proud of you. My, my number one reason, no Dursleys. There's no mention of them. We don't see them. It's a great, it's a great world we're living in at this point. Mm -hmm. 2005. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. So that's, that. that's my favorite part of the movie is the fact there's no Dursleys. So, um, but I have to say is you, you, Brittany, you mentioned jealousy a little bit ago. This is a tough watch if you're a if you're a Ron Weasley fan. If you're a member of Weasley Nation, this is brutal because he is so whiny in this movie. He's yes. incredibly jealous of Harry. He's incredibly mean to Hermione, and his dress robe is absolute trash. It is a tough Ron Weasley hang if you're if you're a Weasley fan. Yeah, to, to and it's right his, from the get go. Yeah, too. to quote his sister, that that robe is ghastly. Like, and it really, honestly, is. I mean, do do people in the Wizarding World not believe in scissors? I mean, I get it. You got wands, and maybe you don't know the spell how to make things look better or cut things off. Use scissors, my, my guy. Like, well, come on. Even the what? Even the robes, like in, like Hogwarts Legacy, the robes that are literally from a hundred years before Harry Potter takes place. It's they're not that bad, <laughs> and. 10 also, like, million times better. <laughs> yeah, and also, Harry, Harry, you are a, an incredibly rich teenager. Like, can you help your bro out? I mean, can well, you please well, just help your friend? I let's mean, not even go there. They're, let's, they're let's wizards. Not even go there. Can't they just make something better with the spell or something? I mean, like... Yeah, but you got to know the spell. I mean, and Amber, we're going to put a pin in that about coins and harry's wealth because that's going to come into play for a future yes. movie anyway yeah but <laughs> harry my guy i need you to like be a friend and like help out your your best mate i mean come on come on yeah anyway yeah, let's... This is, I, like, it's, it's what i think about every single time when harry comes in in his dress robes and ron's just like what are those and harry's just like <laughs> my sandals they're my robes <laughs> They're my chunkless. No, I'm just my kidding. Chunkless. Um, you know, I'll defend <laughs> I'll defend Harry because of like how like jealous Ron is in this movie of him in, in the beginning and like how he doesn't believe that Harry didn't put his name in the goblet. Like to me at this point, after all they've been through, like why wouldn't he believe Harry? Like what what has Harry got to like 
to gain from lying to him. It's just, it's such a weird, like, I don't know. It's one of the parts of the movie I don't like. It's just like, he's so upset with him. And, and then it's like, dude, y'all been through so much. Like, come Teenage on. Teenage boys. I don't know how y'all are with one another. I mean, you know, you're going through puberty. I think puberty. it was just Things are weird. blinded by the jealousy. I don't know. Like, I think he, and he kind of, when he, when they have that really awkward, beautifully acted, um, uh, apology to each other you know I think he kind of even said he's like I don't I, I like he didn't really seem like he had a real reason for it he's just like yeah. everyone else was saying that too and I was really jealous like I'll make everyone said he didn't say that because he's a teenage boy he's not gonna say that directly but you know he he made it kind of clear that he I don't think he really knew yeah it seems like that it was it's a weird beef they have and then it's like they you know, they resolve it pretty quickly, but it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, it, it, of course, movies make it appear that it yeah. was quickly, uh, but of course it, it really wasn't. It, it went on for quite some time in the books, but a couple that's months. Really yeah, it really did. So oh, shout wow. out to Yesenia, who's here in the chat as well. Thank you for the compliment on my hat. I think it was like <laughs> three months, four months, something like that. But I, I mean, I feel like because in the movie, at least where, Ron asked Harry, you know, could you imagine eternal glory? And and coming from Ron, who's like one of seven kids, you know, for him to do something to make him stand out amongst his siblings, you know, he he's like second to last yeah. in the family. And and yeah, eternal glory and having like the the riches of of being that champion. That that would mean a lot to him. Think about from movie one when he saw himself in the mirror of Arisad, he was holding the the Quidditch cup. You know, he wants to be someone. He wants to stand out. Mm -hmm. His he's best friends with like the most well known child in in their history. Yeah. So yeah, he's always going to come second to Harry and Hermione because Hermione's just brilliant, right? A Muggle born who read a who... switch of our age. Exactly. So yeah, I I totally understand why Ron would be upset because when he tells Harry, could you imagine that? having eternal glory and harry's like you know better you than me in other words harry doesn't want it but yet he somehow is always in the middle of it mm -hmm. and I, I i get where ron's coming from but at the same time you have to remember they're 14 they're being dumb yeah that's I, they're just, babies that, that's even as grown men they're all babies like chill out no <laughs> i said what i said <laughs> okay well moving on we always talk about you know the director, and so as I mentioned, this is the for the fourth or for the third time in four films we have a new director. Is there anything about Mike Newell's direction that y'all noticed? I'll start with Amber. Is there anything different about this movie, or anything that stands out that you want to point out? Um, not really for me, but that's also more of the fact that um, I watched these as they were coming out, and I was quite young, <laughs> so I at that time I didn't care about the directors like honestly i didn't even know that there were different directors until like i actually became like really really hardcore fan and actually started like analyzing the movies um to me it was not that too noticeable of a difference yeah i did notice a bit of like how it wasn't as dark as prisoner of azkaban was um and then there's also like the obvious choices of things like their hair <laughs> um the y'all are tough on the hair i didn't really notice it but that's that's just me how could you not it's all in your face um <laughs> it's awful i think the only one that didn't have the horrible hair was draco malfoy like thankfully i mean it was a little bit longer but it was also yeah. a little bit longer in in the third movie but it works because that's it more his style because of how he just styles didn't work it for the other boys my guy Harry, like oh so bad and like i i don't know I don't. anyway away from the hair yeah. um i also noticed that it did seem a little bit more um and that also just might be the overall theme of the books themselves but the the mood was different like it was a lot more of a darker deeper mood with prisoner of azkaban because we were dealing with dementors and they represent depression and things like that while here the there's there's some funny moments there's some laughter there's that yule ball theme song that's stuck in my head right now that's just um 
the certain music and motifs that you hear when the boys are looking at their crushes and like when Harry looks at Cho and things like that, that it's just, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's the most thing that I noticed is just the overall yeah. mood. Okay. Yeah. There's a sense of awkwardness, of course, with these kids, you know, Ron asking Fleur de la Clore, who's, you know, one of the visiting uh, students from a magical school in, in France. It's, it's unlike how Michael Gambon pronounces the, the Academy. It's Bobeton, not Bobatons or Academy, whatever he says. Uh, but yeah, John, John, wow. It's my bad. It's my bad, John. <laughs> Ron was like, you know, bloody hell when he, he first sees them enter into the great hall and they're, dancing and you know the dress is so flowy and what have you um and and then he you know goes and asks floor to to the old wall and apparently he doesn't ask her he you know kind of screamed at her and then like ran for it right i get it i get it but that awkwardness like really shows with uh these kids you know growing up because same goes for harry when he you know gets the courage to ask cho and he kind of just runs through you know his his question of I was wondering if you go to the you'll ball with me or you're just like what sorry like come come again <laughs> you know it's great i think i think it was well done um it was great i wish we saw the fun. ron talk yeah, like screaming at fleur i think that would have been hilarious <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> really yeah. wish we saw that. For um sure but also um i want to kind of like quickly drop it in i don't know if Brittany you're going to mention it later but uh justin you might not know since you haven't read the books the other schools are not gendered like they are in the movies. Mm -hmm. Like there are boys in Beaubaton and there are um there are girls at Durmstrang. Like okay. there's no reason for them to have done that. It was just a choice for some reason. The the, the yeah. head headmistress and headmaster to bring just one over the other. Yeah, and right. kind of on that because Hogwarts is already mixed, and so just to be different, they yeah, probably yeah. so, probably so. But yeah, um, I mean the the entrance of both schools was really cool, just because you're seeing uh, the the Bobatons, uh carriage, you know, with flying horses, Pegasus. Sure, can we call them Pegasus? Like, I guess you could say that they're Pegasi. Pegasi, thank you. And, and they're also, they're technically called a Braxen winged horses. They are in the Fantastic Beast. Look at Amber dropping all that knowledge. Where's that, where's that mic drop? Boom. Um, <laughs> I don't want to drop this. No, no don't, 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 don't. Cost don't, money, don't, don't, yeah. Cost money, yeah. We, 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 we don't have the galleons to, you know, replace that. Sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, that the entrances were really cool. Like, like I said, with the giant carriage that, that's actually where the students would go back and and do their studies, you know, which is insane. But these little tidbits that you wouldn't know unless you read the book. And then Durmstrang coming from underwater in this crazy, you know, awesome looking ship. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean, anyone? But yeah, they're somewhere from the north, thus the very heavy, you know, coats, what have you. Uh, but can can we talk about Victor Crumb very briefly? Yes, because this isn't the first time we see Victor Crumb. The very first time we do see him is at the kind of towards the beginning of the movie where, you know, Harry, Hermione and the Weasleys, they're going to go to like an amazing event, which is like the equivalent of a soccer World Cup. But it is a World Cup. It yes. is the Quidditch World Cup. It is Bulgaria, where uh, Victor Crumb is from and Ireland. You know, they're in the finals. I wish we got more Quidditch because that would have been really cool to see. There's so yeah. much interesting stuff that Harry mentions like in the books that was just completely yeah. torn out. Like that's how we see Vila's. They completely took out Vila's yeah. um, for Justin and anyone else who has not read the books. <laughs> um, Fleur Delacour is part Vila, which is um, like, they're kind of like the harpy sirens. Like they're part, bird kind of part woman that I don't have the exact summary definition, but they are insanely attractive. Like mm -hmm. men ha have, especially during the world cup, because that's the um, Bulgarians like mascot. They brought out a bunch of villas and men were like throwing themselves off the stands and like flexing and like 
calling out to the Vilas because they're gorgeous. And that's why everyone was falling head over heels for Fleur because she's part Vila. Yes. Okay. Never discussed. Yeah. I mean, you know, like like a lady of, of vast 250, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, she, you know, was saying she was really annoyed that they changed the schools from being co-ed and then the extremes of the dancing, the sighing, the ah, you know, uh, and Durmstrang stomping with the staff and making loud, powerful grip. You know, I, for entertainment purposes, it, it's cool. Like it's, it's flashy, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, but I can, I can definitely see the point of it just being a little too over the top. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, the sighing. Yeah, I get it. But, um, but yeah, to see like Victor Crumb being like, what, 17? And he's yeah. the seeker for the the nation's Quidditch team. Like, that's a huge ac accomplishment. You know, you liken that to, um, mm -hmm. uh, like, this last World Cup. Uh, not the last, but the previous World Cup with, you know, like Mbappe. Mbappe, who plays for, mm -hmm. for France. You know, he was really young at the time when, you know, they won. And um, it's really quite the accomplishment, of course. But uh, that's just one thing. I really would have loved to have seen more Quidditch. The campsite was cool. I hate the line. I don't know why it bothers me so, but I hate the line when Harry enters into the tent and he's like looking around and because the tent looks really rinky dink, but like the, the inside, charm. yeah, like the the yeah. the camp on the inside was just like really like crowded and, small and, and well, no, 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 I'm talking about the inside of the tent. Rather, it's just you know, inside, really, yes, yeah, it, and he's just like. I love magic. I'm like, dude, you've been in this for like four years already. Why are you surprised? Like, I need you to not. <laughs> Just yeah. that line bothers me so freaking much. But the twins, the Weasley twins, you know, they have a lot more going on in this in this movie compared to others. And I, yes. I absolutely just love seeing them. I love to see them without the long hair, though. Um, that's just a side, side note. But I really don't like this long hair, y'all. It's not a good look for everyone. Some people can pull it off. Dave Navarro, pull it off. Wheezies, no. <laughs> I'm really focused on hair. I, I was not prepared to talk about so much <laughs> Do hair. Do you see how often I am tugging at my ponytail? Because I just <laughs> want it to look good, okay? Okay, well, it, it does. Don't worry about Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So we always talk about the additions to the cast. And th this, this movie doesn't have too many, but there, it's, there's some important ones. Uh, first off, let's talk about uh, Ray Fiennes. He is Lord Voldemort. Rafe. Obviously not Rafe Fiennes. Yeah. Rafe. Rafe Fiennes. Rafe. Sorry. Rafe. Um, Get it right. That's right. <laughs> um, Amber, what do you think about... I mean, obviously, we don't see a ton of Voldemort in this movie, but obviously the end of the movie, the most important part of the movie, mm -hmm. he returns. Uh, what would you think about Rafe finds playing absolutely love Voldemort. his performance i really do i really like his performance of it like um <laughs> of voldemort um a part of me was a little like his transformation from the, like the cauldron and like the weird volda baby into the into like <laughs> what <laughs> um sorry Just, i didn't mean hear, to hearing so it out loud the weird volda baby <laughs> so, sounds so like so a like, volga like build you a baby or something instead of build a bear or something i don't know maybe they could have opened up a little store off off camera Brittany knows no. that i call him build a baby i call it build yeah. a baby i call it the, that weird like amalgamation i call it the build a baby I, I, I know it's just it's it's one thing to read it in text and then it's another to hear it and then it's just like genuine reaction to build a baby <laughs> like like yes. yeah build a baby <laughs> like but to see I'm i like it i like it out of this no i i, um, I, I think you should trademark that you know, like, oh, yeah. someone else came up with it first. Yeah. I'm not the first person to say it. I'm just one of many okay. and I well. can't get out of it. But um, <laughs> I think it was really cool seeing him go from bold to baby to um, his like actual, I guess, final form. Yeah. Um, I was a little heartbroken because I like the color. I like color symbolism a lot in stories. And Harry I was just going to say, I like the color that he was. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> No, um, color symbolism is super, super important um, with uh, Harry and Voldemort's eyes because Harry, um, Harry's eyes are supposed to be green, like Avada Kedavra, Voldemort's spell, and ha and Voldemort's eyes are supposed to be red, like um, Expelliarmus, Harry's spell. Like it was supposed to be kind of like conflicting that. So it's like a teeny tiny small thing that I was like, if he opened his eyes in that dramatic like meh thing, 
and his <laughs> eyes were like blood red. I think it would have been really cool. But that's a tiny yeah. thing. But I really loved his performance. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was just as deranged and creepy, but also like, I'm powerful. This is why I think like it was so cool to see him. And it really got me excited for the future movies. Yeah, Ray Fiennes, in terms of his acting chops, is is something to not overlook. And, and having seen him in previous movies, and then it's like, oh, oh my God, we're getting Ray Fiennes in 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 Harry Potter. I mean, you're you're pretty much getting a lot of really well known British actors to be in these movies, and so to make him the baddie was really cool. Uh, the fact that I don't know if people like have noticed this, but I li I liken Voldemort's voice change to that of uh, Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones. Like we, when we first see these characters, like the voice is kind of normal. It's it's their normal tone and mm -hmm. pacing, inflection, whatever. And then like it gradually just kind of gets weird. I don't know why that was a, a choice that either the director or Rafe himself made, but it's like yeah. I don't like how they change the voice change throughout the rest of the movies, but I guess to maybe become a little bit more sinister like. However, that being said, I thought it was really cool just to see kind of like how I felt when I saw how Darth Vader got into the suit, Justin, uh, since you made it a point to <laughs> to bring up how episode three came out in the same year. <sighs> I liked how we got to see how Vader got into the suit or why he got into the suit. I liked right. how we got to see mm -hmm. how how Vol Voldemort mm -hmm. virtually going from living in the back of someone's head to eventually getting into a, a, a small body. We're going to call him Volda baby. We're not going to talk yes. about how that happened possibly how that happened <laughs> uh, i'm i don't want to talk about it it's very dark it's very dark it's dark i don't want to talk about it yeah so but then to you know you kind of think oh he's gonna be tossed into a cauldron and he's gonna die cool <laughs> maybe that's just me uh but just the the look of it of how he came to be voldemort again mm -hmm. and and the robes, how the robes just very smoky and just very like, I don't know, it just, the look of it was like really freaking awesome. Um, it was, it was amazing. The feet though, freak me the F out because I don't like feet. The toes, Agreed. the toenails, the, the, the foot touching Cedric's face. We're going to talk about Cedric later. We're also going to talk about <laughs> this line here that Texas Potterhead <laughs> had put H-D-Y-P-Y-N-I-T-G-O-F. If y'all don't know, you're about to find out shortly we know justin doesn't know means. oh justin actually does know i educated him Aww. earlier today sorry but do Where i remember do i remember <laughs> hey no. i can still win no I yeah don't. yeah so but anyway um want to give another quick shout out to those who are who have joined us since uh the pod started texas Potterhead. um yes people loving the boy thorns vibes yeah and then also uh ricky hallows is here in the chat appreciate y'all both being here hi friends so my thoughts on uh voldemort yeah you're right volda baby's back after 13 years <laughs> the return and i thought the wand duel in the graveyard with him and harry was a very cool scene obviously i love it because i have thoughts later. about it but tell me the thoughts that's, no go um, for it yep it's it's wand lore stuff so it's like really really cool with the priori and cantatum um because Priorian Cantatum kind of, um, it's Latin. <laughs> it just literally means um, like prior incantation or prior spell. Um, so there's like, it's kind of weird because in the books, like there's, you can learn like to cast Priorian Cantatum on just a regular wand to find out what their most recent spells were. So it's a kind of like a thing that a lot of like horrors and other wizard cops use. But um in this case, their wands linked, um, their, their duel, their wands linked, and it's because of the brother cores. And that's something that I definitely do cover on my channel, but I'm very excited about it because I do have the same wand core from a phoenix feather from Fox, uh, Dumbledore's phoenix. Um, and I just think it's so cool. And uh, the Priori Gita, and for some reason, they're wands being brothers and linking like that caused Priori and Cantatum. And 
that's why since the last several spells that Voldemort's wand cast it were um <laughs> Avada Kedavra killing people that's why we see the ghosts that's why we see um Harry and James Potter or Harry not Harry <laughs> James and Lily Potter and uh Cedric and um the gameskeeper who isn't his name Frank I think his name is Frank yeah the groundskeeper it is it is Frank yeah this but is very much like the Force Ghost kind of scene. Also talking about Star Wars. It's a Star Wars connection with Harry Potter. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. Mm, weird. It's almost like it's about a hero's journey. <laughs> <laughs> Replace the lightsabers with wands, and there you go. So moving on I, to another character. Who, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Amber. Do you have something else? Lightsabers have just as much information about wands, and I can go into Kyra Crystals. I do have information about this. I can do it later. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to I'm going to tell you something. So yes. I don't know anything about the wands. Fully ignorant about that. But the lightsabers, there's only three that matter. There's the red one. There's the blue one. And there's the green one. Those are from the good Star Wars movies. Everything else doesn't matter. <laughs> Purple one's pretty sweet, though. Just saying. The red, yeah. the blue and the green. And that's it. That's all that matters. I said what I said. OK, fine. That was before I Kyber am crystals personally and... biased considering there's a Kyber crystal color um, named after me. I'm joking. Um, it's there's Amber. Amber is a color. Okay. There, that, that's true. That, that's it's true. an optional ky Kyber crystal. <laughs> so I'll allow that one maybe also, but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. So moving on to another new uh, cast edition, we have Brendan Gleason as Alistair Mad Eye Moody. And, um, yes. you know, once again, Fourth, fourth, fourth movie. We have a different. Uh, we have a new defense. Ma a defense against the dark arts teacher at Hogwarts. And Wonder why? Could be yeah. cursed. Very, very much seems like yeah. it is. <laughs> um, I want to mention with, uh, with this, yeah, right with this casting. Um, originally, Ray Winstone was uh, offered the role. Ray Winstone. He was in The Departed. He was in Beowulf. He was most recently in Black Widow. He's the main villain in Black Widow. He was offered this role, so okay, and he turned it down. But uh, couldn't couldn't put the name to the face. But now you said Black Widow. I'm like, ah, I know yeah, that guy. Yeah. So no, I uh, haven't seen any of those movies, so I don't okay. know. <laughs> well, I haven't seen Beowulf, but I've seen The Departed and Black I've Widow. I've seen Beowulf. They're pretty good movies. So I think um, I watched Beowulf like a long, 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 long time ago. I read it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I <laughs> I know what it is. I I've never seen the animated whatever it was back in like 2000 seven or eight or whatever it was yeah you're not missing much yeah, yeah so so anyway what did y'all think of uh brendan gleason as mad eye moody amber liked him a lot i think he was quite perfect for it um i really like alistair moody and also i was really interested in who they were going to cast for this character because he's not technically always alistair moody he's barty crouch jr and playing that so a majority of the time that we see him in this movie that's not really alistair moody that's barty crouch jr and like especially in all of those teaching scenes which i find so fascinating but we can get into that later i just think it's so interesting how he teaches the kids because he's a death eater <laughs> and it's so mm. i have thoughts about that but i'll get to that later but i liked him a lot I mean, you can share your thoughts now if you want to. It's, it's okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think I wasn't sure if we're going to bring it up later. Um, the <laughs> Well, I think it's in, okay. Of course, it's interesting because we learn the unforgivables about the unforgivable curses and what they are. And we actually get like a spell name to what happened to Harry's parents and his scar and everything. Um. And like we also kind of start to learn, like that's exactly why it's so important that Harry is the boy who lived because he's the only person to have survived um, the killing curse, and that's really interesting. But the fact that um, in the books he does cast this on the kids, like to teach them how to get away with Def it, because defend themselves if they can. Yeah, which is kind of weird that he would do that as a death eater like i'm teaching these kids to be stronger against voldemort <laughs> that makes no sense but um 
It is interesting too because uh, Barty Crouch, the reason, the way he escaped from Azkaban, was um, that his dad kind of snuck him out. They replaced his body because uh, Dementors can't really see; they just see a soul. So they replaced his body with his mother's, and like who was dying? Yeah, who was dying? She was dying already. So when she died, they buried him. So they the the Barty Crouch Jr. was assumed to be dead not no longer in Azkaban. Mm -hmm. And um, he was under the Imperius curse for years. So it's like he suffered under the Imperius curse for years because it was kind of his form of confinement. But um, like, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's so interesting because like he has uh, so much experience with that. But then also, um, I don't remember if it's in the books, but I do know that they did mention it in the movies that he was also involved with the uh, cruciatish torturing of the Longbottoms. Yeah. So it was also really messed up that he was the one to like call out Neville to like bring up your drama. This is how your parents went insane because I did this to them. Like that, that was kind of messed up. I mean, in a way, he's kind of a sadist. I think he just likes to inflict True. pain and it doesn't matter what form. And, and, and I, I <laughs> everything that Amber was saying, spot on, I agree with, of course. You got to give it to a guy who's a Death Eater, who escaped Azkaban and committed to a year of teaching kids. Lesson plans are tough, y'all. Like, I'm married to a teacher. Like, I, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. <laughs> like, that, there's a lot that goes into it, of course. Think about it. The lesson plans, the teaching, the tests, the grading. Come on. Like, that's a big commitment for a former, not former, but Death Eater who's yeah. pretending to be a Hogwarts teacher. And the very fact that um, the very fact that Dumbledore was completely, uh, he, he, he was bamboozled in a way. Like, he had no idea that this actually was not his friend, Alistair. Uh, Mad Eye Moody, this, you know, someone who was using Polyjuice Potion to mm -hmm. impersonate. So, yeah, I, it, it was a really interesting kind of thing. Because you think Dumbledore being as wise and as powerful as he is, you think he'd catch on. But no, he did not. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of fun to see Brendan and Gleeson, uh, again, partake in, in a Harry Potter movie. Yes. Again, top top notch actors who have come into the world of Harry Potter. And I love just the kind of not quite psychotic but just like his his demeanor is very different from his predecessors of, of being a defense against the art, dark arts mm -hmm. teacher right yeah quarrel was just kept to himself but you know like just always in fear of things squirrely uh, squirrely is a good word yes thank you lockhart lockhart was just a fraud uh <laughs> you know lupin who was probably the most uh I won't say qualified, but he he's someone who actually taught the kids things. Mm -hmm. You know, Moody would have, the real Moody would have equally been just as good as Lupin, if not better. But the fact that he, yeah. his personality was always like, oh, I'm always, I'm, I always think there's an enemy behind me. Constant vigilance, which is something that's in the book. Constant that he's, vigilance. He always says to the students, constant vigilance. But I think Brendan Gleeson just gives that performance of someone who. He did. He, you should be afraid of him, but it wasn't mm -hmm. for the reason that you should be afraid of him, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah, because cause... he's Barty Crouch for yeah. the, the whole entire movie. You know, you mm -hmm. see the real Moody inside the multi-leveled chest once it's discovered, right? That that yeah. Barty Crouch is Barty Crouch, you know, and he's done the things to make sure that Harry gets to that graveyard scene so that Voldemort can return. And he's like, you know, I'll I'll be I'll be held as a hero. And it, Dumbledore says a great line. He's like, oh, I I really don't have time for heroes. As he's ushering away Harry Potter. I mean, come on, Dumbledore. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> and also, I think it's really cool that this is our first time seeing an aura. Mm -hmm. Um, or is a like like they said in the books, it's a dark wizard catcher in the movie. Sorry, they say he's a they're dark wizard catchers and. So it's kind of like really, really cool. It's it's a very prestigious job, and it's also very dangerous. Um, and it's what Harry grows up to be. Harry ends up being and becoming an Auror, and head of the department. 
Yeah, head of the or department. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's so cool because this is Harry, I guess, seeing his future, I guess, Uh, in a way, like him being like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. I have a weird talent of defeating dark wizards. Maybe I should, you know, invest in that career. And he does. And I think it's in like later on when he actually gets to start choosing his electives, he does choose classes because he does want to become an or. And I think that's really cool. And I think he did, the actor is so well at portraying someone yeah. like that. And not to leave out your boy, Ron, Justin, I know you were concerned about Ron earlier and, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, kind of being left out, but it, or it, it being a rough year for Ron. Right. Ron too will become an aura and join Harry at the ministry. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're best buds through yeah. and through, despite their little. But he does end up retiring. Uh, sh- 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 but- Okay. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. You're yes, right. we will. We will. We'll You're get right. there. So y'all both mentioned Barty Crouch Jr. Now he was physically embodied by David Tennant in this movie. Yes. Amber, I, I, I think you're pretty familiar with David Tennant. I what, am. Did it, what did it mean to have him in this movie <laughs> for you? Um, He is Doctor Who. <laughs> he is actually um the most, um, I, w- I would say he's the most p- famous doctor. Um, a lot of like there is Matt Smith who played the eleventh Doctor. He plays the tenth Doctor, and um, my personal favorite. Um, they are drastically different characters, so it is um very interesting to see him playing somebody you know a little cuckoo and um evil. <laughs> um, because the Doctor is a very energetic hyper i guess um quirky dude happy and it's weird to see it was it was a little bit weird initially um but i do i loved his performance and there's actually like i've seen people do because of him being in doctor who and being the doctor um they use that hermione's line with like the doctor and then um David Tennant as Barty Crouch saying uh, with Hermione's quote saying um, awful things happen to wizards who meddle with time, Harry. And it's like, Oh, cause Dr. Who involves time travel. So it's like, whew, blow my mind. Um, Worlds collide. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that is very, very not accurate considering they are completely different people, but it was so cool <laughs> um, as a post to see. Uh, but I really liked his performance. He showed just the right amount of, like, I guess also vengeance and loyalty to Voldemort. And it was very interesting to see him. I liked it a lot. Now, I I don't remember, Amber, and those in the chat, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember if the tongue flicking that Barty Crouch does in both his true self and as Moody, if that is something that was done in the books or that was just something created for the movie just so that you can kind of identify like, Oh, there's something off about this guy because there's a scene mm-hmm. where Mad Eye is, is talking with Barty Crouch senior, who's from the ministry and kind of overseeing the tournament as it plays out. They have the exchange mm-hmm. words and he does that weird tongue flick thing. And, and Barty senior like looks at him like, Oh, I, I recognize that. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then like five seconds later, he winds up dead in, in the forest. So, again, I don't remember if that's something that's from the books itself or that was just... I don't remember fun. either. Yeah, I think that... I'm going to go out on the limb and say that was created for the movie, but that was at least a good way of kind of, like, identifying that there was something off about this character and the the true being was going to be, like, revealed later. Because uh, he does it several times uh, kind of throughout the movie and... You know, he's constantly drinking the polyjuice from the flask, which Mm -hmm. that flask is like a really sought out uh, replica, if you will, amongst Potter collectors. I don't have it. It looks really cool. Um, I don't think I'll spend the money to get it, but it does look really, really cool. Uh, But with the good. Oh, I was just saying, I I just really like how how the actors did those portrayals together because Mm -hmm. you can't, because as a team (laughs) playing this character, uh, I don't know. It, there's so much inception of <laughs> this person playing this person playing this person. Whatever. Yeah. Um, 
I think it was really interesting because like the the tongue flick, they are completely different actors doing a tongue flick that looks identical. And it was perfect. I and I other small little mannerisms I think was really cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And mm -hmm. and to kind of go back to that of David Tennant, you know, I, I'm not a a doc not that I'm not a Doctor Who fan. I've just never watched it, so I can't say if I'm not a fan or not. His performance, albeit very brief on screen, I think was done extremely well because you can see that kind of like crazy and that 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 loyalty he has to Voldemort, like at the very, very beginning of the movie when we see what's happening inside the Riddle Manor, which is yes, Tom Riddle, aka Voldemort's, you know, ancestral home, if you if you will. Frank, the gardener, sees a light on. He goes to investigate. He sees people there. And he's, that's when you first see David Tennant. And you see, like, that look. He's very, very loyal to his to his master, the Dark Lord. Mm -hmm. And it gets up and gets ready to defend, right? He'll do whatever it takes. And he, you see him on the grounds of the campsite for the World Cup. He, he casts a spell into the sky of um, Mos Marta, which is uh, the the spell to cast, like basically the symbol for the Death, uh, Death Eaters, you know, leaving mm -hmm. their mark, which is a really cool looking mark. It's a skull with the snake, you know, kind of slithering around and through the mouth. And yes. that that symbol will instill fear into people because that's not something that's been seen for many, many years, right? And so people start getting into a panic and the fact that Barty Crouch Jr. is still loyal after all these years will do the bidding of, of whatever the Dark Lord asks him to do. Hey, I want you to go teach at Hogwarts for a year. Keep an eye on Harry. But like, I need you to be a teacher. Like, I need mm -hmm. you to do the thing, right? Yeah. Um, and, and to really have a hand, and I'm doing this transitionally, I have a hand in putting Harry's name into the Goblet of Fire. Yes. Orchestrating I mean, all of that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, the real mm -hmm. mastermind is, is Barty Crouch Jr. in, in mm -hmm. all of this, I think, truly. Um, Yesenia here says she's got a friend that has that Death Eater tattoo. I have, I have temporary, I have temporary tattoos of it because uh, one day I do want to go back to Orlando or even in, in California to visit the, <laughs> the Wizarding World Park because during, I think it's during Halloween time. Mm -hmm. they is. have like an, an event with all the D death eaters that come out you know as cast members they come out and if you present them your arm that has the tattoo on it they're not going to try to fight you they're actually going to like bow down to you which i think is kind of cool like i you know it's just those fun little yeah. interactive moments that guests can have with the characters or castmates it, i think it's just like kind of cool um it is really that, cool but the fact that like if you challenge one of these Death Eaters at the parks, like with your wand, they will kind of like circle around you as if they're they're going to duel you, which I think is pretty cool. So y'all yeah. haven't visited the parks during, I think, like, once again, I think it's Halloween time. It is need Halloween to do so. Time. Yeah, nice. I personally, <clears throat> um, as a Slytherin who always gets asked like, oh, so you're a Death Eater? I personally am trying to like always try to get away it's from like, the Dark Mark. Always. <laughs> yeah, it's constant. And I mean... I like a lot of the characters and stuff like that. Like Bellatrix and Draco are pretty cool, but, and they are technically counted, but like, I, I just have got real, like, and Brittany, you and I have dis discussed this on this before, like that Southern does get really a bad name a lot often. So I personally try to see people are surprised by you with me. They're like, Oh, I, I get it. I see it. I'm like, why <laughs> fuck you too? Like, <laughs> You know, like well, whatever. it's even then. Like once they tell them, they're like, "Oh yeah, I can see it." But does that mean that you're evil? And I'm like, mm. "No, no." Yeah. And so I try and get really away from Dark Mark. Like I don't really buy. I won't buy merch at all if it's Slytherin and the Dark Mark. If it's just Slytherin, I'm fine. But if it has a Dark Mark in it, nope. I have a I have a T-shirt that has the or it's like a tank that has the Dark Mark. Of course on you it. I just think it looks cool because it's simple. <laughs> but like you know, it's it's fine. Of course I, you I do. It. Yeah, well, see, it's that kind of <laughs> shit right there. Sorry. But um, anyway, anyway, y'all, y'all are funny. Uh, in the chat, Lady of Bass yes. 50 says a guy she knows works at the California location is going to audition to be one of the Death Eaters in October. That is super Good luck cool. to him. Yeah, for real. Like, don't try to fight me, bro. I will come for you. 
<laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, Bricky Hallow says, I like how there's a lot of Barty Crouch Jr.'s story. He's one of my favorite villains. Villains? Villains. <laughs> I can talk. Uh, I agree. I like how we get to see his backstory through the pensive, which is like the very first time we get mm -hmm. to see the pensive in use. It's not the last time, uh, but it's a way for someone to revisit memories that they have since maybe not forgotten, but it just allows them to relive it once again. Um, but unlike time travel, they can't interfere with it, right? They're just like reliving yeah. it. It's literally just a memory. Literally. Yeah. Um, although I think I still would be very much afraid of falling from the ceiling into a chamber. It was like cool. That. It was no. terrifying, but it would be cool. Uh, that, that, that. See, I'm I have, a, I have I a fear of heights. Them. I have a fear of heights, but I feel like it's more of a fear of falling. So it's kind of like, yeah, that's not going to work. So understandable. That being, said, that being said, so as I said, I transitioned into putting Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. Justin, that's all you. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm going to, I just want to wrap up our cast editions with the final one I want to talk about. And that is a vengeance. That's right. Future, <laughs> future Batman, Robert Pattinson as Cedric Diggory. Yep. I'm glad you went that route versus Edward Cullen. Thank you. Right. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about that too. Either but, way, he's uh, a bat. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Lord so, mercy. Um, just want to point out. So, Senator Diggory was actually in the previous movie. He was yes. played by Joe Livermore, who is a stunt performer slash actor. He was briefly seen in that movie. Obviously, Senator Diggory has a biggery, bigger, a biggery, <laughs> bigger. <laughs> <laughs> he has a, has a bigger uh, role in this movie. A bigger role in this movie. Words are tough, y'all. Yeah. But I wanted to point out, there's some interesting stuff that came out about this not too long ago. Uh, Henry Cavill on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast back in November of 2022 said that he actually auditioned for the role yep. of Cedric mm -hmm. Diggory. Thank and then God of course, he did not get it. Uh, and then also a weird like Pattinson Cavill thing was that the author for Twilight, Stephanie Meyer, uh, had, had said also on the Happy, Sad, and confused podcast that Cavill was the only person she could imagine playing the role of undead teenager Edward Cullen. Yeah, she made really, really bad edits of his face. <laughs> like, so, I, yeah, I, it, it, she, it's man. cringy. She said, The most disappointing thing for me is losing my perfect Edward. So I just thought that's interesting because obviously then Patton would go on to play Batman. Cavill, of course, played Superman. I mean, different <laughs> universes, but it was definitely These a BV, Yeah, it definitely was a BVS. Uh, battle back in uh, the early 2000s for a couple of these roles. Um, mm -hmm. Amber, first off, what did you think about Pattinson as Cedric Diggory in this movie? I thought he did good. I, um, I, for one, he looks significantly happier than he ever did in Twilight. Um, <laughs> it's like you see that is the very light true. That leave, you see the light leave his eyes. Um, Anyway, we're not talking everything about else with it. Good God. Yeah, we're not talking about Twilight. I don't. Where, where's to. Mel? Mel is a huge Twilight fan. She should be in here. Mel, we're talking about. <laughs> I know Robert nothing Pattinson. about it. I have never seen one of these movies. I mean, I know that, that it was very popular, but that's all I know. So read them and watched them. Same. But I'm a classic vampire fan. So, I mean, yeah, not my jam, but. <laughs> it's interesting anyway. Um, like if you really dive into like the details of it, it's actually really horrible that they the things that they gloss over, but we're not getting into that. This is a Harry Potter run. This is not <laughs> not Twilight. But I think he did amazing. Um, I it's also the first main character that we really see that's a Hufflepuff. Yeah. And I love Hufflepuffs. So yes. I think it's really, really cool um to see him. And I think it was a great portrayal of that he because even going into like his wand stuff like it makes so much sense for him to be a hufflepuff and for his character because he's courageous and brave and loyal and true and mm -hmm. that's all very hufflepuff traits and i think that um robert pattinson did really well with it and he's i think i like him as diggory There are those, myself included, <laughs> within the Potter community that like to refer to Cedric Diggory as Dedrick. I know. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, there, there's one uh, friend of mine over on Instagram 
<laughs> Paula. She very much dislikes Cedric Diggory. And she's a Hufflepuff. Like she she owns it. Like that's that's her house. She represents, you know, she loves all the houses, maybe with the exception of Slytherin. But yeah, she uh <laughs> she she rolls deep for Hufflepuffs, but not for Cedric Diggory. She just doesn't like him. So anytime when we get the opportunity to like show him being dead and 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 here's the thing uh the, the choices of either acting or dialogue is just really out there in this movie still want to talk about that one that texas potter had shared earlier but the scene when harry and cedric return from the graveyard and amos diggory the father is in the stands he's coming down he's like let me through let me through. That's my boy. My boy. That's my son. I mean, it's, I, 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 and I can only understand, I'm not a parent, but I can only understand as a parent, that would be truly traumatic to see your, Yeah. I, I think Cedric was the only child, but to see your, your child come back and he's dead. But it's just so over the top. Like, uh, it, it just, it, it makes me cringe every single time. And that's kind of like what we, kind of make fun of in a way over on, on Potter Pottergram. But with Robert Pattinson, I, I want to say this really was his debut in the movie industry. What better way to kind of get into it than like a huge franchise that is Harry Potter. So probably yeah. to you. The other joke is of course, you know, Cedric Diggory died so that he could come back and be born, be reborn as Edward Cullen, which um, yeah, the, like Amber, I read the books saw the movies. I am neither team Jacob nor team Edward. I don't care. The books were fine. <laughs> um, I think this isn't a twilight pod. Yeah. I think just my, my, <laughs> I don't care for Robert Pattinson just because of various things, mainly twilight. Um, but he was fine in this movie. I, I can't give him the quite the same raving review as Amber has, but he was just fine. It's just, it was a very short-lived part, if you will. Yeah. Short-lived? Really? You had to go there? <laughs> <laughs> that was totally unintended, yeah. but it worked out. It worked out. Well, I, I'm <sighs> team Bruce Wayne. I like him in the Batman. He's I think team he Vengeance. Good, yeah, he does a <laughs> good lie. job in the Batman. Yeah. Short-lived, <sighs> much like his parents in Crime Alley, which we lost. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> good God. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean. I mean, to wrap it up with, with Diggory, you know, Cedric rules and Potter stinks, right? Like, where can we get those buttons? I need a uh, button. I have one. Okay. I have one. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like one. Please. Okay. Got you. <laughs> hey, but no, even but... Cedric said he's like, I have to ask my friends not to wear them. Yeah, I know. No, he he was uh, he was kind of the good guy. You know, was, it was... he the good guy? Was he well, though? I mean, he wasn't the hero. That he could have done more. Well, to be he could have done, done, done He could have done he, a lot more. He right. only did what he did. Because Harry helped him out helped with him the out. first task with the dragons. Right. Yes. And then he only did what he did because Moody, Mad Eye Moody, helped Cedric out with yes. figuring out the second clue to go to the bathroom. And, that sounds weird. The bathroom. <laughs> the prefix <laughs> to go, bathroom. To go and open the egg underwater so you, you can yeah. hear what the clue was. That that was all of Mad Eye Moody. That was not Cedric. Yeah. Not that mm -hmm. bright. So I know we're skipping around here, but whenever whenever Harry went to the fifth floor bathroom and uh, Myrtle is there, this is what I wrote in my notes. <laughs> Myrtle is a little horn dog. <laughs> she is. I'm proud she of is. that too. She is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's like, over here, like you know, trying to be like that mermaid that we see in the back, and she's yeah. just you know. Yeah. 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 There's that, and uh, I mean, she. How old is she? Like what? Fourteen, fifteen when she died. I mean, stuck yeah. forever at 14 sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I imagine you get pretty bored and <laughs> you're also in a bathroom. I mean, that's that's not the best. It's not yeah. the best. This has right. gone from like our this normal rated pod to like borderlining. She just haunts the plumbing and of Hogwarts. She doesn't like because this isn't yeah. even her bathroom. It's not her bathroom. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> um. But before we talked about the bathroom, I want to talk about the Triwizard Tournament. Let's just get into that. Okay. The fact that it's it's called the Triwizard Tournament, 
yet they allow four wizards to take part in it. Now, granted, Harry didn't put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Someone else did. Yeah. But still, it's called the Triwizard Tournament. Try for three. Like, why? Why do they allow well, this? I we don't have any confirmation of this, but um, I heard the theory and I really liked it. Was that um, it's a form of a um, unbreakable vow that um, you we will get into in future movies. But mm-hmm. um, it, you if you break it, you die. Uh, and I. Because that's I, normal to put, you know, 17 year olds in that sort of predicament. And that's younger, okay. that, like the, the age thing was only in this time. It, like they did that's have true. 11 and 12 year olds in the past. It's um, like the Hunger Games. Mm hmm. And like the reason that they stopped the games and only brought them back then, now is because so many kids were dying that they were just like, yeah, this is like obscenely dangerous. Maybe we should stop this. Like, <sighs> whatever. Yeah. Um, I th- that's what I think is that it's kind of like the the chalice itself that is the goblet, um, functions as like an unbreakable vow. When you put that's why Dumbledore when he's I almost said Voldemort, that's why Dumbledore every time he says he's like, there's like from henceforth like this is a this is a thing you are committing to this like he tries to he tries to say like if you put your name in like X Y Z will happen like. <sighs> Could have done more, but that's what I think. Um, because Barty Crouch does say, like, hey, it's a binding magical contract. We can't do anything about it. And how mad I did it was he made it, made the goblet think that there was a fourth school. Yep. Yep. And thus Harry's name emerged. Now, when you pose the question of did Harry put his name in the Goblet of Fire, you don't say it calmly. <sighs> Unlike, you know, what was written in the book. You have to say it appropriately. Justin, I'm looking at you. Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> no, you had to do the, I uh, like the shaking. No, uh, I was more the shoulder shaking on, on the inflection. Did you put your name the, in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> I mean, he's pushing Harry into the trophies in the trophy room. Like, good God, man. First of all, why? Why did either director or Michael Gammon or whomever decide we're going to go this route. We're not going to ask calmly, like it says in the book, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? No, sir. I did not. All right. That's literally how it went in the book. Like Dumbledore did not push it. He, he, he just simply asked Harry because, you know, they have like this rapport of where Harry doesn't lie to the headmaster. Like he's never going to, unless it's necessary. However, he doesn't, Dumbledore doesn't come charging at him the way that he did in this movie. And that was something that, again, amongst all of us in the Potter community, were oh, floored that's... with. It was just like, why? I remember in theater seeing it, I, I like legit jumped back. I was like, well, I was shocked. Mm-hmm. I, because I didn't expect it. No one did. Like, no, was... no. So I'm at this point, Dumbledore butchered Bobaton's name okay he says bobatons he 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 phrases the question to harry so aggressively it was very very scary truly and i'm at this point where it's like anything that dumbledore says like i just i can't i can't i can't just no stop talking dumbledore stop well Um, also i feel like he took it from an ang like he made he portrayed dumbledore as angry from the mm get-go like I feel like in the books, when Dumbledore, when the name, when Harry's name was revealed, he was like more like shocked, confused, and like just trying to work it out already. Yeah. While even here, he's like, he even like he, when Harry wasn't getting up, um, he's like, Harry Potter, Harry Potter! and like he looked mad because he's like, Harry, where he's like, move he's like, your ass. ass. Like, yeah, it was like, bro. <laughs> so, I mean, we kind of could have maybe anticipated it a little bit more from that but yikes i mean i feel like from the get-go he was p- portraying dumbledore as super pissed off i mean he's just kind of like how could you do this to me Wah! 
I mean, just so it's way over the top. So that you're supposed to be a pick wrestler, not for now. Like, I, it's like, can we just have one year when you're not involved in something? This was supposed to be entertainment for you. He's like, Jesus, um, I put the age line so that you couldn't do this. What the fuck? Like, seriously, that that I think is what was going through Dumbledore's head, and the very, the very fact that it still didn't go right. But just uh, the aggression is what I can't get over. So, like I said, the, the choices yeah. on both uh, that over the top performance and then like Amos degrees of that's my boy, that's my side. Like, that just for me is like, okay, we're sorry. It's like, I need y'all to, but, but, um, yeah, like I think th this this is the this line has been the one thing I've wanted to talk about most since we started the series of Harry Potter yeah, podcast. Like, because I've been bringing it up every single month. We have we we mentioned it at least once in every episode. I think right, and I'm going to continue to reference it because it bothers the mess out of me. So as it should, it's annoying. It it's says in the annoying. book calmly. He asked calmly. Like he I have a calmly. I have a pin, like an actual lapel pin, because I I collect pins but it looks like the goblet of fire with with the flames but inside the goblet itself it says he asked calmly we're never gonna let this go no i no, i'm it. just excited for the show whenever they get around to goblet of fire i just like anticipate the actor who's going to play dumbledore just being intensely calm to try and make up for it because of the years that they have heard i hope I dream, I pray. But <laughs> <laughs> how funny would it be if this person was just like overtly calm? Like, I am serene. I am chill. Just because in the past, you know. I, I don't know. That's that's a separate topic for a separate day. But anyway, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> it was, uh, that was quite the scene. End scene. Talk about something that's also not very calm. Let's talk about the first task or the first trial, I guess you yeah. could say, where you have, to get, you have to get past a dragon. You have to collect an egg, get past the dragon. I've, I've talked about this since we began this, this series of talking about these movies. I think the dragon looks great. I think the CGI really holds up. Amber, what are your thoughts on the dragon on that whole, that whole trial scene? Um, I've loved dragons since I was a very small child. So, um, like, I've always loved dragons. Like, I, I think dragons are really cool. They've always been my favorite magical beast. And they're also my wand core. So I'm partial to dragons. Um, seeing um, a dragon in Harry Potter, amazing. I loved it. Um, again, I, I, I agree. I think that it still really held up. Seeing the horn tail was cool. I wish we saw the other dragons, not just miniatures. Um, I thought it was so cool. And... Harry using his flying ability was really cool. And the flight around the castle was interesting. And like, I was actually like really scared for Harry. Um, like granted I had read the books at that point, but still like you felt the stress and anxiety as he is on one of uh, either Ravenclaw or Gryffindor tower and like trying to not to fall to his death because he can't reach his broom while there's a dragon chasing him. It was so cool. And yeah, I agree with Lady of Bast. It was kind of messed up because it's a mama dragon. And you took a, like, she thought that that, that that golden egg was her baby. And it's kind of messed up. So my question for y'all is, was there only one dragon or was the, did each person have a different dragon? Yeah, Correct. Okay. Also had different dragons. For, okay. Leading up to them actually facing the dragon, you, you see them in the tents. Barty Crouch Sr. comes and kind of explains what the task is going to be. And, and he asks everyone to put their hand into like a little pouch and they okay. each reveal like a little miniature live dragon. Yes, it's live. Um, that represents a very real full grown okay. version of the dragon. So each each champion got their own dragon to face off. Harry just so happens to get probably the most aggressive one right. out yeah. of the four. Uh, we I have only saw enlisted. Harry. Yeah. Yeah, right. we only saw Harry's. Okay. Um, well, we saw Harry the, we saw the miniature of Fleur's. We okay. didn't get yeah. to see the other two miniatures, and but we so we only saw Fleur's and mm -hmm. Harry's in miniature form. But we only saw the full grown um, Hungarian horn tail. So yeah, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, Harry had the Hungarian horntail. Um, Fleur had the Swedish short snout. That was really hard for me to say. Um, Crumb job, had the Chinese it. fireball. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't <laughs> leave that out. <laughs> you got to do it. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Crumb had Chinese fireball. Ooh. And um, <laughs> Cedric had the common Welsh green. Christian of McDorks, thank you so much for being here. He's like, it was a setup. Uh, I, I think you were probably referring to the fact that Harry was getting the Hungarian horn tail. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, everything is a setup. Everything is a conspiracy. I'm sure. Yeah, let's get this kid out of the way. Mad Eye Moody, Barty Crouch um, Jr. Actually, you know, probably finagled that to to make sure that Harry got the most aggressive uh, well, I dragon. Well, it the whole point of, um, of Barty, like, I guess um, toying with the results of the game was so that Harry would win, so he could get the tournament, so he could, you know, do the porky. And so, I mean, I mean, that's sure, kind of a but big mess up. Sure, but at the same time, like Harry had no freaking clue how to, you know, battle a dragon, of course. And he's like, I, I you know, well, what are your strengths? Well, I'm a fair flyer. He's like, you know, better than what I hear. He's like, but I'm not allowed a broom. You're allowed a wand. It's just like, okay, creeper, like calm down. Um, but yeah, so Harry learns how to use the summoning charm of Accio. That's how he's able to get the broom to hop onto it. And thus the chase ensues with the Hungarian horntail. Eventually he's able to get the egg. You do naturally is party, right? Open the egg in front of everyone else and it's screaming at you. Ah! And everyone's like bloody hell, basically. And yeah, thus the next next task to try and figure out begins. Right. Yeah. But in between that, we have the Yule Ball, which I think mm -hmm. y'all probably want to talk a little bit more about. Um, first off, Neville is just a dancer. I mean, the guy can the guy can dance, right? Like he's he can move. He's in um, it. Yeah, he's in it. Um, I, I did like the scene where Harry and Ron are trying to get dates and mm. they're, they're talking about how these girls all travel in packs and how you Listen, to get one on their own. If you know, how you, how do you ask them to get them on their own? You know, cause they're always together. This is what I'm going to say about that. Yeah. What happened to Hermione when she went to the bathroom by herself and in, in movie one, what this happened to why, moaning Myrtle? <laughs> this is why we travel in packs. Yo. Okay. I'm just saying I'm here yeah. to educate y'all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair point. Um, I did like how after the dragon scene, you know, Ron saying, you know, Harry, you slay dragons. If you can't get a date, who can? So that was pretty good. And then Harry's response was, I think I'd take the dragon right now. So that that was that was good stuff. I, I yeah. enjoyed that. Um, Harry asked uh, Cho, but of course she already has a date, Cedric Diggory. And uh, of course we have the Hermione, like she's asked by Victor or by Victor Crumb. Of no course. one knows though. No one knows that. And of course, uh, and Ron didn't believe her because he's right. jelly. He's very well, jelly. Yeah. He, he's all like, oh, oi, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie, Hermione, you're a girl. He's, she's like spot on, you know, like you just notice that I'm, I'm female. Like, okay, <laughs> cool. And two it's points so for funny Gryffindor. Because like, as he's saying that, Harry sees that Snape is walking up. And so he's like, but also part of me is also like, you're messing this up, bro. So part of me is thinking that he's like trying to stop Ron, not just from Snape, but also just Ron from putting his foot in his mouth. <laughs> like, yeah. bro, 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 stop, stop, stop. Yeah, but, but, but how Ron tries to kind of mimic his, his brother who, you know, sends a note during their study period to be like, hey, you know, you better get a girl before all the good ones are gone. The brother asks... Uh, you know another girl and he's like you know do Angelica you want to go Johnson. to the ball with me you know that kind of thing and so Ron tries to do the same thing with Hermione you know after saying you know hey you're a girl you want to you know you want to go and and yes Snape approaches and whacks you know him and Harry on the head with a note that whole scene as one does Snape is just Alan Lord Rickman of the Allen may he forever rest in peace brilliant just brilliant yeah and it was needed. I mean it was needed from and from the get-go, like, I guess it also, going back to Ron's jealousy, it shows from the from the second that Hermione said that she had a date, he didn't believe her. The right. second she said it, he's just like, he's she like, can't sure. be serious. 
she can't be serious, right? Like, because he just doesn't even want to contemplate that. That she could get a date before him? Yeah. I mean. Or right. that Hermione's not at his disposal. That is very true. That is very true. But she got the last laugh when she showed up as Victor Crumb's date to the old ball. Yeah. Looking but fabulous. Amazing. And I agree with the, because they did change her dress color. It's supposed to be periwinkle, not pink. Yeah. But right. I kind of agree with the choice because it's so similar to the Bobaton color. And mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's so close to it. And also, um, even though Cho is also wearing like a silver white, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it was too close to it. And they also said it's because it, um, the pink better complemented Emma's skin tone. And I agree. It looked great on her. Yep. Dress is beautiful. I've, of course, you can, you know, buy the dress. There's patterns out there. I've seen Ooh, yeah. so many talented people. You can people. buy the jewelry. Yeah, exactly. And then the hairstyle people love to recreate just because, just because, one, they love the movie so much. And then this is like Hermione's really yep. big opportunity to. Pivotal moment. Yeah. Like she, she really came out out of her, like her comfort zone. She's mm -hmm. always been like the bookish, you know, girl, big hair, you know, in the book she's described with like really big teeth and, you know, the features that are not mm -hmm. maybe very flattering to a young yeah. woman and mm -hmm. who young men might not say, oh, that's very attractive. Yeah. But then like she steps out into the Yule Ball and then it's just like, oh, like Harry himself is just kind of like, oh, yeah. that's, that's my best friend. Who's and Emma female. is, <laughs> Emma is stunning and gorgeous and beautiful. But it definitely does take away how impactful that scene was for Hermione. Because okay. she's always been gorgeous. So, yeah. like, seeing Hermione, who is supposed to, like, described as frumpy, frizzy, and, like, bucktooth. When, like, Emma w was never really that. <laughs> she was gorgeous yeah. from the get-go. So, um, it, it could have been so much more impactful, but it was still really cool. Like, I guess for once he's seeing her as not my know-it-all friend to, yeah. oh my God, she's hot. Yeah, yeah. So she definitely was turning heads. Definitely mm -hmm. was turning her heads. Uh, I think that's when Draco Malfoy probably realized, hey, she's kind of hot. Yeah. <laughs> we are... Like, you see Draco for, like, a split second in the background, and his outfit was nice. His dress robes were nice. They, they... Really quick. Okay, because a lot of people on social media were just like, was Draco even at the Yule Ball? Yes, you can spot yes. him. He's dancing. You can see him, like, at a couple points in the, in the, <laughs> in the scenes. However, there was a previous scene where he's kind of mouthing off at Harry and... Mad Eye comes in and turns Draco into a ferret, a white ferret, you know, and he's you know making him go up and down in the air uh, as a ferret, and then you know he transforms back into into Draco. But when you notice what Mad Eye Moody is wearing, right? He's wearing a kilt. There is a white ferret attached to what he's wearing around the kilt, yeah. and a lot of people were all like, "That's Draco Malfoy." <laughs> That's yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not him though. Well, but I mean, he did turn him into a ferret it's, it's, earlier it, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He did. But yeah. it's like, no, y'all. Like Draco Malfoy was actually there in human form. But I just think it was funny because it was like a way Draco's never going to get over that ferret. Like, and no one's going to no, ever let no, no. him and, get over it. And and this further is the point earlier when we were talking about Barty Crouch Jr. in Mad Eye Moody form uh, that he's basically a sadist. Like he like, likes to torture uh people and if it means transfiguring them into like an animal that's just one way of you know stressing the point that he's he's a sadist so um and what better way to torment draco than by you know bringing the essence of said ferret to the yule ball i mean i don't i don't know um oh christian I you're swear. hurting my heart man today. he's killing it in the chat um <laughs> He's really honestly killing it with all these Cedric jokes. Mad I turned Draco like, into what, a ferret. Six of them? Yeah, but Peter turns Cedric into a puppet. It's like, oh Lord Jesus. That's just, just so bad. <laughs> so bad. <sighs> Not a fan of Cedric, but yeah, you're killing it. But um bum. 
So to wrap yeah. up the Yule Ball, I thought it was kind of nice to see Haggard get kind of handsy. That was nice <laughs> on the tall woman. Like, you know, why not go for it? And then uh, he's getting it. And then you had, uh, you know, Harry and, and Ron are just kind of sitting there with their dates and someone comes up and offers their arm to the Harry's date. She's like, arm, leg, I'm yours. I thought that was a great line. <laughs> it's a great line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's and tough, even like the winding down of it, like you see people like tired, you see yeah. like other girls like taking off their shoes, not just Hermione, like you could tell like they're crying. Yeah, yeah like, that's, yeah, that's a high school dance. Yeah. I mean, some kids, I think it's a deleted scene or extended scene, but some kids are trying to get a little, a little handsy, handsy in the bushes, in the, car- in the carriage. And yeah, that's the deleted scene. But yeah, Snape goes around and finds them and whips open the door i'm not wand. happy you're not allowed to be happy and he's like i can't get any neither can you like is this real or what no this is real it's a deleted oh, wow. scene yeah okay. it's, it's, it's a deleted scene, scene. no uh, i'm being 100 percent real about okay. this like it's, and it's it, is in the it is in the it is yeah books. Okay. yeah to, i mean again um, this is like you for this book and movie like you really get to see these kids growing up you know they're they're did you say for this book and movie or did you say something else you said this book and movie no, I said this book and movie. Gotcha. It sounded like something else. Okay, go ahead. Wow, I need you to stop. <laughs> I need you to stop, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> no, just like I said, the, there's the, the, the great the theme of jealousy, the theme of just like growing up, basically, and you're or you're having to grow up a lot faster than maybe you needed to. Um, <laughs> yeah. Interpret that as you will. <laughs> oh, um, uh, before like we can gloss over this. Yeah, I saw that. Um, don't come up in the chat. Don't come up knocking if the carriages are rocking. Hey. Um, hey. No, I wanted to touch, like, just for a second, we can gloss over as fast as we can, as we want to. But um, what did you guys think of um, Rita Skeeter? Man, listen, I, I love Miranda Richardson as an actress. Mm-hmm. I loved her in Sleepy Hollow. Um, I think she's she was a great casting for Rita Skeeter because like you immediately just like thought she was despicable. You didn't like her, right? But yeah. man, she she was just done. She was done in injustice because there was so much more to Rita than what we got in the movie and and mm-hmm. all her little scoops for writing in the Daily Prophet. You you never knew how she was getting that information, and not it's that it never really, shown. It's but, never shown. It's not that it's really, it makes a difference truly, but just like it would have kind of like helped kind of seal the deal about her and why you shouldn't like her. And specifically with Hermione, because she was always getting intel about Hermione and, and spilling the beans yeah. about her. And for Hermione at the very end in the book to kind of get revenge in a way on Keep Rita. Keep captive. Yeah. I mean, she's virtually. So, so, we, okay. In the previous movie, we learned about Anna, Anna Magus. There are witches or wizards who have the ability to turn into an animal. Uh, Rita Skeeter is an unregistered anime guy who, or anime guess who, who turns into a beetle. Rightfully so. She's able to get into small places, get in your hair, get in, you know, places uh, and hear conversations. And that's how she was able to learn all the things about yeah. the champions and friends and such. And Hermione figures this out and she, you know, uh <laughs> captures her keeps her in a little mason jar so which i also have a lapel pin of it's a really cool lapel pin. yeah and um i think it's really like I, I i wish we had at least gotten like a, even like a background like tiny little hint of it but we didn't um no. especially because it does like rita is a recurring character we do see her more and um <laughs> that's true yeah like her her work and mm-hmm. i think it's also it would have made more sense as to the fact that, yeah, she does know what actually happened, but she embellishes it. She changes it. She's a gossip columnist. That's all there is to it. Yeah, like, I feel like, yeah, they kind of made that obvious, but it would have been even more obvious, especially because later on when she does publish the book, like, later on Mm -hmm. in the future books, Mm -hmm. like, when, like, take everything she says with a grain of salt because she messes everything up. She knows yeah. what actually happened because she was there in her bug form. But yeah. Yeah. I just wish that she had a little bit more or to, to allow her mind to kind of get her revenge. But at the, at, ultimately at the very end of it, the big deal was obviously Voldemort's return. Right. And, and I actually am okay with how they concluded the movie with 
the, the kids yes. waving goodbye to the rest of the schools, uh, the importance of the friendship and having allies. And as things get tough, basically, you, you need to rely on those that you can. And, and Hermione kind of says, you know, everything's going to change now, isn't it? And Harry says, yes. And and because that's just the, the fact of the matter. Now you're entering into a whole mm -hmm. new stage of life and what that means for the Wizarding World community now that the yeah. big bad is back. So. And it's literally life or death. And yes. it is taken a lot more seriously because not only is Voldemort back, but he is in solid form. Like we had rumors or whispers of it before in attempts, but now mm -hmm. he has his own body back and he has people yep. who have escaped Azkaban. He ha his followers are back. He's called them back. Yep. They attacked a major worldwide event, sporting event. Like mm -hmm. it is like this is all happening and it's getting a lot more serious mm -hmm. yeah so enter a new dawn of war yikes on bex <laughs> so one thing i wanted to touch on real quick that we haven't talked about much is the second task the champions have to rescue someone of val value from the black lake and to me, this is such a crazy, like, so what if they're not able to rescue the person? Is there any, like, fail safe? to where die. Someone... That's, that's. No, insane. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, is there a fail safe for, like, for example, you know, yes. Harry has to save Fleur. two people. He saves, yeah, he saves Ron and Fleur's sister. Yeah. And then, then, like, they award him second place. And I'm like, he saved two people. Like, that's, I mean, if you're going to, like, not, like, if you're going to. Moral fiber. Up, what better than that? But if you're going to bump him up from, from fourth to to second like for saving two people shouldn't he like go from fourth to first he saved two people but he didn't come back in the time frame i don't know i mean i i get it i get what you're talking about but you know cedric did return with his person right and in the time, in the frame. time yeah yeah okay. so i mean that's and so did crumb why and so did victor crumb mm -hmm. so it was more of an injustice to to crumb than to anybody else really yeah uh, that's why um Kakarov, like spits at dumbledore <laughs> yeah he's like Tuh. um but no i mean if if a, a champion wasn't able to retrieve their person they, they were going to be fine it's not like they were going to die underwater or anything like that like they they were going to be they fine. were informed they knew yeah yeah, like, yeah. they, 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 they were knew told. what was happening yeah they yeah. knew it was like a like a sleep charm or something i can't remember the specifics right now Drought but of dreamless sleep something like that but yeah, yeah they were, they were gonna be fine they were gonna be fine okay. Fleur's little sister included so yeah, and yeah. the mer people also like they are their own civilization, and like Dumbledore speaks Mermish, um, like yeah. the the mermaids were guarding them too. So mm -hmm. no, uh, like there wasn't any anything that was like the Grindelows weren't going to go after them. Um, anything else that may be in the lake <laughs> was not going to go after them. The giant squid definitely is friendly, so it definitely wasn't going to go after them. You're just going to wave. Um, yeah, we love the giant squid here. Right. We never get to see it, but yeah. Right. But we love them. But we love we them. Do. We do. So, Amber, is there anything you'd like to touch on that we haven't talked about? Wands! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will be as fast as I possibly can. So, I have, pay I have, I have notes. So, um, we actually do, well, before they start their tournaments, they have to go through a wand weighing. This is to make sure that they're not cheating or being, um, uh, you know, I guess have nefarious plans. I don't know. Uh, so they have to do a wand weighing. And so they bring in my boy, Garrick Ollivander, and he uh, gives us complete wand stats for everyone's wands. And we know Harry's wands, and I do cover that in a video on my channel. But... Um, so I'm going to talk about Cedric, Fleur, and Crumb's wands. Cedric's wand um, is made of ash, uh, unicorn hair, and um, for some weird reason, Ollivander says a particularly fine male unicorn. I don't know. <laughs> He's never before mentioned the differences between that, but whatever. Uh, it's 12 and a really four. really inappropriate joke, but I'm not going there. Go ahead. Hey, um, we're talking about wands that those kinds of jokes happen all the time. It's fine. It would have been, it would have been very fitting, but yeah. It's oh, it's going to get even more fitting when I talk about lengths and flexibility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I need to say, um, okay. Um, Cedric's is twelve and a fourth, and uh, pleasantly springy. <laughs> Brittany's face. 
Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Ash is described as uh, loyal to their first owner. They must never be passed down, which is, you know, really ironic considering Ron's first wand was an Ash and Unicorn core. But um, anyway, Ashwoods are... Um, they will just stop working. They'll give up with uh, when given to another wand if they're taken away from their owner, their first owner. They're like, this is my person. That's it. No one else. And this becomes extreme with a unicorn core, like Cedric's. And uh, But these woods are courageous. They're never crass or arrogant. They're brave and loyal and true, which is perfectly Hufflepuff and perfectly Cedric. Um, Fleur de la Cour. Um, we act, we know what all of her stats, but we don't have a definition of her wood. Um, her it's rosewood with vila hair, uh, nine and a half inches and inflexible. Um, but uh, rosewood is not listed as the wood, uh, it's just kind of a we are assuming that it's because it's pretty. It's a very fine, nice wood. It's very glossy and go it's go it's gorgeous. A lot of wine makers that I know use it. It'd be fitting for Fleur, given that yeah. the Vila hair and just how it looks mm -hmm. are just so important to her, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it and it's the uh, one of the only cores that isn't the three that um that Ollivander uses, the dragon heartstring, Phoenix Feather, and uh Unicorn hair. So v seeing some Vila hair was interesting. Um Ollivander says he doesn't use it because it's insanely temperamental. Like he's just like it's too much for me to work with. Like so he doesn't the really insane do it. woman that possesses said hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like Vila's and uh, her like my sister in law. Sorry, <laughs> the core of um, Flor's wand, the Vila hair, is actually her grandmother's hair. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so she has a lot more connection with it. While it's just overall a pretty wand, which suits her because she's pretty. Uh, Victor Crumbs is Hornbeam as the wood, which is also Ollivander's wood type. And um, which uh, they are, uh, they adapt quickly. They, um, they absorb the honor code of the owner. So yeah, so if the owner is um, super, super honorable and true, then it will follow suit. It, it just matches them. And it's very adaptable and also um, very much like a, Ollivander, he says outright that it is his wand wood. And he notices that usually these people have one pure passion that they are usually seeing realized. And this could be taken as Crumb being such a good Quidditch player and he becoming famous for it. So that's his, while wand making is Ollivander's. And his core is Dragon Heartstring, same as mine. And it's 10 and a fourth inches, and the flexibility is um, rigid, but the, he, like, for some, an another creepy reason, Ollivander mentions that it is thicker than expected and that's my description of wads but i think it suits um dragon harshing suits victor crumb depending on what we know about him and pretty... <laughs> i shouldn't wait to say these things until you're drinking <sighs> i'm glad you didn't because i i still don't have full control of the right side of my face just that would have been disastrous so yeah thank but, you for um, not that's my uh, wand lore corner with Amber, but uh, I think the wands suit them very well and it's really exciting. And um, yeah, so that's short little blurbs, but I will do videos on them eventually. We're yeah, and those, those wands, like they come in a really cool display uh, from, I believe mm -hmm. it's the Noble Collection. Crazy expensive, crazy yes. expensive, but, but I want it. The aesthetic behind it just looks super cool. Like, so if you're into collecting wands, uh, or just want to learn more about on lore, I dropped the link to Amber's YouTube channel here in the chat. Be sure to show her some love. Go check out her videos on the character ones that she's already done analysis for. And also don't forget to head over to Instagram, follow her there. All of her Thank links, you. as well as mine, because I do have a second channel that I have not been active on, sorry, um, <laughs> are in you the description it. box down below. Yeah. But um no, that was that was that was good like tidbit for mm -hmm. learning about these characters and their wands. It seems just wildly accurate and appropriate.
based on their character, like yes. their characteristics. That's definitely why I like Juan Lore and why I found it so interesting. And that's why I started my channel to begin with was because I noticed all of these things and, oh, hey, that actually makes perfect sense. And going into the historical and cultural backgrounds of the woods and the magical beasts, it makes sure. so much sense. Like unicorns are associated with purity and loyalty and Cedric's a Hufflepuff. <laughs> like, what more do you need me to say? It, it just Cedric's dead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Dedrick. Dedrick. He's Edward Cullen now. And also he's Vengeance. He's just like that unicorn in the first movie. Oh, too soon. So Dead. as we're wrapping up here, let's let's get final thoughts real quick. Uh, Brittany, final thoughts on Goblet of Fire. It's not one of my favorite movies, or rather, I don't rank it super high when it comes to Harry Potter movies. It is entertaining. I just I'm just bothered that, of course, so much was left out because at the time when the books were being released, that was the fattest book yes. out there. And I remember carrying that book around before I knew how to, you know, respect books. Right. Um, that is one of the most broken spines I own in terms of books, just because it is a hardcover and I yeah. I remember reading it in middle school because at the time there was um, a thing, a program, I don't know if it still exists, called Accelerated Reader. It, kids were encouraged to read and take little quizzes, or earn points, and you could get like prizes or a pizza party, some crap like that. But you could earn a lot of points by reading that Harry Potter book. So I carry that sucker around with me everywhere. And yeah, it's sadly busted, but it is a first edition. So I'm not going to ever replace it because first edition. But I love the book. I absolutely love the book. Just the amount of details that they go into about like the personalities, um, the things that you don't get to see in between the the tasks and um, just the different things that they left out in the task in general, like with the maze. There's so much more that went on in the maze, like different creatures that the champions encountered, like that with the Sphinx. You had to figure out a riddle in order to get past it or else it's going to kill you. I feel we should have gotten that. That would have added definitely to like this whole suspense of is Harry going to be able to make it to get to the yes. the cup? Um, and and then of course be transported to you know the graveyard scene and what have you. That's beside the point. But um also they didn't even like specify, they just said that Crumb was bewitched. Right. That was Imperio. He was Imperioed by Moody. Yeah, like he was Imperio. That, that was Imperio. And they mm -hmm. never explain that. They never no. show that. So it's just yeah. Harry says, he's bewitched, Cedric. Like, yeah. So a lot of the things kind of like in Azkaban, you know, you never knew how Sirius and Lupin knew how to work the Marauder's map. It's because yeah. they invented it. But you just kind of had to accept that they just knew. And that's obviously what happened here in this movie as well. And yeah. what will continue in the rest of the movies, sadly. But... It is a it's a it's a good watch. Of course, it's actually John's favorite. I want to say it's his favorite book. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's his favorite movie. I think it's his favorite book. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's entertaining. I, I I like. There's a lot going on. There's far more things going on in this movie yeah. and book than you did it like in the previous. And it's starting to become a little bit darker, which I yeah. actually like. That's one of the things I really, really like is that it's starting to show, hey, this is the start of the second Wizarding War. Like, it's just mm -hmm. the fact that it's just becoming a bigger deal and getting more serious. Like, hey, we have to buckle down and this is war now. And but everything that Brittany said was perfect. But I, I it, again, it's not one of my favorites, but I definitely say I think it's higher up on my list than others. Because Azkaban, when we covered it, like I did mention, like how Brittany did that, there was so much they left out. So, but I think that they still did a little bit better than an Azkaban. So for me, this one's a little higher than Azkaban, but mm -hmm. uh, we still haven't gotten to my favorites. So yeah. hoping for that. So, yep. We're halfway home, four up, four down. So <laughs> that's um, true. I enjoyed the rewatch. I've, I've enjoyed rewatching all these movies, like, you know, kind of like doing a little bit of research and learning more about it. And um, this is a good one. I, I enjoy Like I said, I watched mm -hmm. this one three times. So uh, 
It's my most watched. Whopping Harry Potter three movie. times. Well, and, and twice in the past <laughs> two three weeks. So uh, I wish I wish I had the band playing in the background as Justin was saying that. And then like they play up again when Cedric gets brought back dead, and and then it just like fizzles out. It's like oh shit, like okay now what? <laughs> I, I do really like the score for these for these movies. I think it it mm-hmm. sounds it sounds like a big franchise so oh yeah yeah Yeah. i definitely um i started to notice that there's like certain songs that play with the love interest that's like every time like something like vaguely romantic happens like when when they're outside by the lake and victor and hermione share a look and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like the same kind of music plays that whenever when cho and harry are interacting and yeah Harry spilled his drink all over his shirt. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I was last month. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what's funny? Uh, because you just mentioned Victor Crumb, and I know we're gonna head out soon. Mm-hmm. Victor Crumb in this movie is far better looking than how he was described. Oh in yeah, the book because in the book, very strong features, right? The big nose, the eyebrow, and and you know what have you. And and it's funny because John points this out every single time we watch the movie that the the young man that asks harry's date for her arm at the yule mm-hmm. ball think of that guy that's more closely related to what crumb is described as in the book yes. as opposed to seeing in the movie in the, in the movie and they did great casting with the movie uh with stan um he mm-hmm. and he embraces it he still goes and appears uh at like comic cons and things like that and, and i think he's going to league con this year too Oh, nice. Yes. Leaky con. Yeah. That'd that'd be cool to go to one day. But yeah, you know, he, he embraces like Tom Felton, you know, he embraces the fact that he's part of this world and fans still recognize him for it. And, and he's just like super happy to be a part of Harry Potter. And I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah. So here in the chat, uh, Yesenia says, she's like, I like, I like these, I think movies she's talking about makes me want to read the books. I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, if you have a Kindle, (laughs) Yeah, because I, I was talking about books before Kindles, right? Um, however you choose to, you know, get into the books, you, you do you, boo. Um, she says she's only like Justin has watched the movies. Um, hey, so- I, I recommend to get into it. And I mean, there's a like I've told Brittany before, there's a podcast of the dude who, who he's never, never seen the movies, never read the books, no, nothing. And he's watching it for the first and reading the books for the first time. And then he watches the movies. Yeah. Very funny, very interesting. And so if you want, like, I guess a companion while reading it, it's great. It's like a book club. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, but, I'm going to, I'm going to encourage Justin to read the books after we're done covering. Yeah. I say <laughs> everyone His eyes, look at you see that. <laughs> Everyone should read them. And <laughs> Justin, I mean, you're going to learn how to read, sweetie. I'm just I know how to read. We talked about this on a previous podcast recently. I, I read know. a whole book. I read one, the novelization one. for Man of Steel. Just one. Not a great movie. Not a great book either, but I read it. <laughs> so <laughs> Audible. Yes, Audible is your friend. Audible yes. is your friend. Great narration. Audible's great. Um, yeah, that one has a really good good narration i've listened to it a couple of times so and as yesenia says audible sponsor us yeah that would be awesome yeah it would uh that it would be and um even then there's also like if you do want to read like the book books i reckon i know they're a little bit more money but i recommend the illustrated editions because the illustrations are gorgeous pictures and yeah and (laughs) I just think they're beautiful and the details is great. Actually, in the illustrated version, the the depiction of Crumb looks like he looks like such a little emo. It's great. He looks like a little goblin. I love him so much. (laughs) It's just like the what there's like a scene, like uh, it's covers both pages. Yeah, it's both pages. It's like a whole spread of um, just the scene of the Yule Ball, and you see a whole bunch of people. And um, yeah, you see Crumb in the background. He just looks like a little like emo goblin creature like it's great i love him um but the illustrated books are gorgeous so if you are more of a visual person i recommend that because whenever i do rereads i do the illustrated ones now but they only have um one through uh order they aren't going to do the remaining ones yes i think you're talking about the jim k 
editions. Yeah, yeah they're not going to do the remaining one. Yeah, he's decided mm-hmm. that he he's going to do some self care and mm-hmm. remove which I respect it. Good for you. Oh yeah. Hey, more power yeah. to you, bro. It's all but good. I am a little so, heartbroken yeah. because those are my two favorite books. So audible, audible. Yes. Yes, yes. audible. But. In the meantime, we're doing an audio and video podcast right now. So we're wrapping it up. <laughs> As we get out of here, Amber, we talked about your channel a little bit, but let people know how they can find you on social media and how and talk about your channel just a little bit as we get out of here. Thank you. Um, I am, um, my channel is covering, as we mentioned before, covers wands and wand lore in the wizarding world. I do a cultural, historical, and um, symbolic meaning of the wood, the core, flexibility, all of that, and a full analysis of the wands, like a character analysis, and compare them to the character that owns that wand and see how well it fits. And it's very fun. Um, I, my channel is also, um, uh, Brittany's linked it before. It's also down below. It's a uh, all of Amber's wands, like Ollivander, but with my name, Amber. Um, just change two letters and it works. And um, it's the same thing on Instagram. Definitely um, send me a DM if you want to chat with me. Or you just have to be about wands. I like a whole bunch of other things. Uh, great she big does. nerd. Yeah, I'm a great big nerd. It's not just sticks. And. <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to, um, that would be really helpful. I am currently at 244 subscribers. I'm very close, um, very close to 300. And the uh, third birthday of my channel is actually on Harry's birthday, this July 31st. And hope I've been taking a bit of a hi- um, hiatus off of my channel this year because I've been moving in weird filming locations. But I am moving literally later this week hopefully uh, once i get my setup uh, up and running i'll be recording and back to wandlore yay very cool we're happy to have you uh as always it's always great to have you on the show Thank look you. forward to the next time we do another one of these um and and Brittany, you know just like just like amber we're also on social media how can people find us though yeah so uh first we want to thank everyone who's joined us today for our pod on harry potter this was slightly delayed just because i got sick um but we're back obviously i'm i'm very happy to be able to do something normal with my friends here and talk harry potter um and we thank you yesenia we thank you bricky lady abast um texas potterhead mcdorks uh walking with the woods if i've missed anyone i apologize uh mama Ma- Mama Maggie, she was here too. <laughs> Hopefully, she's still here. Um, but for those who have been watching and joining us in the chat, we really appreciate you being here. This is the best way to interact with us as we do our live streams. Of course, we want to hear your thoughts. We also would really appreciate it if you subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell. That way, you can be alerted to the next time we have a podcast coming up. Although, that being said, the watchers will be taking a brief break for the summer. A lot of us are going on vacation, uh, but you can obviously check out our pods here. Uh, check out Marvel, check out Succession. Man, Succession was huge, y'all. That was very donkulous. Um, just things that we cover, of course. From the okay. Flash. The Flash. Listen, <laughs> I will admit, as a non-DC fan, I really did I really did enjoy that movie. Lots I think of we're the... We're the only people in the world that like the movie. I think, so. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, check out our past podcasts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And also you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Watchers Basement. We love it if you would give us a follow over there, as well as use the hashtag Watchers Basement to help build and grow our audience. Let us know what you want us to review, what your thoughts are on the things that we talk about. Once again, using hashtag Watchers Basement. And lastly, we have video podcasts, but we also have audio podcasts available to you. Excuse me, at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> I was trying to speak parcel tongue for a second. Um, <laughs> be sure to give us a five star rating. It really would help us out. And here on YouTube, we are at 267 subscribers. Help us get to 300 that is the goal for the remainder of the year so tell your friends tell your coworkers, tell the death eaters um tell you know everyone that you know that we're here we would really appreciate y'all giving us a subscribe to this channel yeah i'm, I'm hoping we get some dementors too like let's don't forget about them let's get dementors and yeah. people of bow bottoms and dirt <laughs> there you go 
the dragons, Cedric, Cedric the Diggory fans, the yeah. mer people, um, you know, Grindelows, Grindelows. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take them all. Yeah, just make sure you subscribe to Amber, subscribe to us, and that's it. Did you subscribe to our YouTube channel? <laughs> that would be a funny. <laughs> we should do a voiceover and change it. Oh God, that hurt actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure, Michael Gambon would appreciate that Jeez. and approve that. So I mean, yeah, it's hilarious. Do it. Mm. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah and like ricky said don't forget to uh like yes. this video we there you go it. like the video yeah, yeah. thank you Ricky. thanks for the help yeah <laughs> yep. so uh thanks to Brittany. thanks to amber um i'm justin saying we will uh see you next time uh next time when we come back and talk about harry potter and the order of the phoenix so hopefully we'll be back very soon so again thanks for watching thanks for listening have a good evening Bye-bye. bye bye